Hi, right, I'm going to uh, try and be more brief than my last Bash Tips video because it just got too wordy even for me. I did uh, get some useful feedback on a previous video um, which unfortunately the uh, author deleted. I bear no ill will, I think this is a very good summary of my videos. All I can say is that uh, you'll be lucky to get to seven minutes I think on this one. Anyway, back we go to Macedonia, uh, which is now in a funny shader. Uh, so I've been doing interiors and on a whim I decided to make a bunker because why not? Everyone likes a bunker. I've gone too far. So we go down here and uh, it's not a very good bunker and it's not very finished yet but it goes deep and it has lots of iron bars, we like iron bars and it's got an escape tunnel which I'm failing to navigate down and an escape tunnel has to have an escape hatch and this one's by the garage, there's a car here for an escape so it all kind of makes sense roughly apart from obviously the amount of money you need to spend to build this in a remote area of Macedonia or North Republic of no, Republic of whatever, you fill in your desired name there while I give you a pause. And so I thought this would be a good uh, sort of watch me build it as I go. And so I did. And it took me ages and I got stuck and it was flipping boring. So I'm going to just show you the results of one bit while I can. Uh, I'm going to be brief because my daughters are downstairs. I'm being a parent of the year. Um, so I'm going to jump to Lightwave where I make the stuff. First step was just to make everything in the same spot and then figure out how to disassemble it later. So we have a trapdoor, a pivot attached to the trapdoor which fits into what I'm calling a receiver of an actuator. The actuator is pivoted in turn on the frame because as you raise the trapdoor the relative angle changes. So I wanted to encode that in a blueprint whereby as you open the trapdoor the piston automatically sorts itself out though of course in reality it's the other way around. The actuator pushes and the trapdoor follows. Um, and my first pass of that was to say okay we know where that point is because it's a socket and we know where that point is so you can find a vector from one to the other. Very straightforward you just subtract one from the other or use one of the built-in commands and then you align each part along that vector. So simple I thought. Now there is an extra complication in that that pivot is attached to something which itself pivots uh, but we'll come to that. So the uh, first thing I did was to split all these chunks into different things. So I've got a mesh for the trapdoor, got a mesh for the frame, mesh for the bottom bit, mesh for the top bit and I've also got a mesh for, it's gone, uh, the controller and a handle on the controller to operate this. But first things first. And uh, eventually I got it working. So you can see as it moves the angle changes. And uh, I've put in a limit to the movement because of the way that Unreal does its things. Um, that as soon as that trapdoor passes the vertical, because Unreal uses rotations internally and because I've used rotations for things, it messes up because past the vertical point it flips it around 180 and changes the sign and that's the result. However, for the range we need to use, it's fine just to put in a limit there so that it will always work fine for the range we're going to use. And fully extended is fine to get out of. Uh, so how did I do that? Well, the idea of using the vectors was problematic because you can find out a vector from there to there, but if your frame changes arbitrarily, if you roll it, if you pitch it, um, it's hard to determine. It, it can mess things up because a vector does not give you any information about the roll around the vector. So my first implementations were having odd effects where if you rotated the frame you would get different results and it would start rotating round on the pivot which it's not supposed to 
and I struggled with how do you do vector maths to get something constrained to the plane that it's in now uh, but in the end I realized the easiest way to do it was just to use relative rotations in that all that changes is the relative pitch of this thing and the relative pitch of that thing so don't bother trying to do anything else uh, so here's what happens first of all I set the relative rotation of the trapdoor and then I get the socket locations of both pivots get the vector between them and then I get the rotation the base rotation of the socket holding the receiver which is static as opposed to the other pivot which moves with the trapdoor so this is the easiest way to do it um, so uh, let me show you this stuff so here is the frame there is a socket for attaching the trapdoor or a socket for attaching the receiver pivot as you can see I've put a rotation on that the red arrow is the sort of forwards direction so that points straight up and it could point somewhere else but the mesh would be misaligned and uh, so you've got these two lines one going straight up and one pointing towards where the pivot actually is the dot product uh, gives you the cosine of the angle between those lines that angle is what we need because that angle is the desired pitch correction so we do an inverse cosine add some angles to produce offsets we could probably just add the socket rotation we found there and we set the pitch the relative pitch and we leave the roll and the yaw alone so that means that all movements are constrained within the right uh, plane no matter how the frame is orientated we have to do a correction for the trapdoor's relative rotation and then we set the relative rotation of the other pivot and the result is what you saw so I've probably skipped a few steps there but um, it gives for this example a perfectly usable pivot I might have to do more work to make it work over a larger range of values by you know using quaternions rather than rotators but I don't know if that's gonna work in this case because of the information we have um, yeah rotations in a reel are a pain and often go wrong but here it's going right enough and that's what I needed so that's the piston sorted and so now we have to control the trapdoor to open and shut on command and then we have to build the device to command it which I will just find now there we go so that is our box where we have a lever that's going to go in there and the lever is here and that's going to be controllable from there to there so that setting means open and these lights tell you whether it's locked moving or open and that's a power light so the other thing I want to get is a nice bit of interactivity sort of flashing lights that is always fun this map is now dynamic lit so that's a piece of PISS and let's do that next let's do the we'll do that blueprint next just a quick note um, to go over the basics in case you're not familiar with this stuff I've made some variables in my blueprint so this is my trapdoor blueprint uh, I based it off the static mesh for this frame which I can't rename so that annoys me uh, attached to that is the trapdoor which is attached via socket trapdoor hinge and attached to that is the actuator piston attached to a socket on the trapdoor and then also attached to the mainframe is the receiver attached to another socket so once you've set up the sockets um, everything else is relatively easy um, and then in my construction script I just run the set the mesh angles which is a function that does this stuff I showed you earlier so nothing crazy there I'm going to have to call this from other places as soon as I start um, controlling the movement of this but we'll come to that later alright let's make this thing um, I will actually start with a controller box um, because I want this to control everything rather than have the functionality in what is essentially a static mesh um, so there's a bit of logic there but I'd rather have all the logic in this box so I'm going to make a new blueprint randomly electrics uh, new blueprint class 
I'm doing it this way around so just so I can rename things. Just want an actor. Um, I want electrics controller. I'm not sure about that name, but I can change it later. What I think I want to do is to make a generic control system, um, but I'll make it have this box as the default static mesh. Why not? Uh, so add a static mesh. Oh, there we go. Um, controller box. I'm not sure about the naming scheme. It's probably very uncorrect. Uncorrect. Um, yeah. So I'll leave that there for now. I don't know if I want to have a lever or button as a core thing. So mm, do you know? I just make the blueprint and make it more general later. Let's just get on with it. So that's going to have the lever as a subcomponent. Uh, so I'll add another static mesh. Oh, actually we want to attach it to handle and remove that offset I just put in. So yeah, sockets, we like sockets. And we'll call that one operating handle. Now I'm just going to stick in, where am I? Stick in some lights, yeah. So controller box has um, a small point light. I suppose mm, I could do sockets again. I want this to be a little less bright and only have a small range. I can tweak the lights later. Could set up some colours while I'm here. So going with the concept that green is open. And I'm going to have a material effect as well, but we'll come to that later. And the last one, I fancy a yellow power light. Let's start off. Put these on for now. That's a bit much, but we can fix that up later. And this. Hmm. I think I might address this with a socket. I want to have a socket for open and a socket for closed. This allows me to avoid having to hard code in anything with angles into the blueprint. So there's our handle. Um, I'm just going to Do that and handle closed. Now red. Is green the way it points? Well, basically, whoop. I think that's what I want.
we'll see. So if I go back to here, if I reattach that, no. If I reattach that to handle open, and handle closed. I don't need to know why it works the way it works, it just works. Okay, so I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to have some variables. One variable is going to be uh, socket handle on, which will be a name, compile, that name will be handle open, make it visible. Give these category controller for now, just to keep it a bit more neat. And off handle close. Is that right? Handle closed, yep. Uh, we want a state initial state boolean and I want a hidden version which is the current state and I'm just going to do this as I go in my construction construction script there we go right uh, there's a few ways to do this. I think I'm going to do it this way, where there is a target state and there is a um, transitioning state. And I'm just going to set these here for good measure. So when you move the lever, it starts transitioning. Um, I think I need some kind of progress which I'm going to make between 0 and 1 uh, or leave a, leave a state I'm going to type this here And a lever state has a lever speed, which is not a straightforward number because it will multiply by the tick. Um, so let's just compile that. Who knows? Let's start with that. I think that's all we need there. Um, okay. So I'm going to add a trigger volume. I want to make this key operated eventually. I don't tend to bother because I'm going to integrate into other games and they have this all set up but I don't want to duplicate and maybe get things wrong. But I'm going to start with a trigger anyway. Uh, oops. Oh, maybe it's a collision. So just going to keep it simple. So if you are standing in front of this, it will activate. And we want to have a function um, which is Uh, update lever state will be one thing. And I think I can do it this way where I'm going to get the two. Oop. I want the whole transform because that includes the location and 
the rotation most importantly in the world space and I want to do the same for the off handle and I'm thinking about doing an interpolation between the two independents on the lever state. Uh, there's probably yeah, well, I might use that too, but I'm thinking there's probably a built-in function for it. Maybe not. Okay, we'll do something custom. Let's split that out. I'm going to assume it stays in a fixed position, so I'm going to ignore the location and just set the rotation on second thoughts. Let's just put that in there. Okay, so here is the finished um, product. Uh, we take just the rotations, I'm not taking the locations, though in the more general case I would, and multiplying by 1 minus the state and the state to even up with your combined rotators, and you'll see the results. Okay, that's now what we wanted. So we can now animate the lever by changing the lever state over time and updating. It may not be the most efficient way to do it. Uh, and let's make another function. Um bit wordy. If we're already transitioning, that's fine. We'll just transition back if we need to. So target state will be this and that is all we need to set the lever state will be what it is but let's set it here and I'm just gonna be I suppose doing uh, a proper job and presetting the lever state to be what it should be. So if the initial state is off, the lever state will be zero. If it's on, it'll be one. And from there on, it'll just manage that state by itself. I think that's all we need to do. I'm not going to set the lever state. It is what it is. And here, I'm now going to have a tick where if we're transitioning, We will do things so if lever state okay, so let's start with zero, uh, let's start with one. Do this check after an update. So if we are transitioning, nope. I'm thinking on my feet here a bit. So we're no transitioning. If the target state. is false, then the lever speed will be negative. Otherwise
otherwise the lever speed will be positive. And that is the adjustment. Multiply stuff by the tick value so that it happens uniformly. Sorry, this is horrible. So that is the speed times the tick. And we get the lever state. Add, which may be subtracting that amount. And then set it. Uh, I'll clamp it. No. That's what we want. So that will update the lever state. This will update the state. And you want the tick stuff to be quite lean if you can. But that's alright. And then we'll test. So if the target state is true and the lever state is greater or equal to 1, which it should be just equal to, or uh, if the target state is off, and this will do a corresponding test. So if it's hit the top or the bottom, this will execute and current state will equal target state and transitioning will stop. I usually make a mistake in some of this logic but I think that's okay. Um, right, so that compiles. We want to catch the collisions. Uh, this is just a placeholder. Collision trigger on overlap. Begin overlap. That's all I care about. And whatever the target state is, make it not. No, wrong one. So transition to whatever is not the current target. Right, so here we are. We walk up to it and the lever moves. And to do that again, and it moves back. And we interrupt it mid-flow and it changes direction. So that is essentially how I'd like it to be, except it would be um, activated by the player. And the texture looks funny because that is a world-aligned texture, so that might have to change. Um, but that's, broadly speaking, the desired behaviour. Next, to I up to the speed a bit. Um, no, I don't want that there. I up to the speed to 0.5, but actually one is a more natural speed, I think. And um, yeah, so I want it to change to far off an event. Custom event. Whoa, event. 